documentation, so I can't say much about it. But that was the allegation that was read out to her. When Mesado appeared in court on May 15, the prosecution indicated that investigations into at least eight other reports were underway. Townsend says he is not sure what the result of those will be. Nothing more than what we're, t what we're told sorry, at the, the first um, hearing when the matter was before the court, or with the matter before the court, that there were other charges that, um, that were pending. So we were told this, so I suppose that um, these are the charges that are coming. So we don't know, you know, how much more is out there or whether or not there are others, etc. On that same court appearance, bail was granted with surety along with several other conditions. Townsend says Mesado has been complying with those conditions and is cooperating with the police. She's very much aware of the um, negative publicity that, um, that she's getting, especially on social media. However, of course, she's unable to speak to the issues, um, speak to the matter because the matter is before the court. But um, she is um, complying with all of the instructions of the police, the instructions of the court, and she has every faith in the um, judicial system. On the charges laid on Friday, Misado was granted bail in the sum of $100,000 with surety. Reporting in the field for CVM Live, I am Nicoy Wilson. A parish manager from the Jamaica Agricultural Society is now calling on the government to do more to end the attack on farmers and their livelihood, saying the agriculturals have lost billions to pay their larceny. CVM Live's Khadija Thomas has the report. Six billion dollars. That is the reported amount that has been lost to Topredia Larsney. According to the Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS Parish Manager for Clarendon, Charles Killingbeck, who has announced that the JAS has found one way of fostering accountability and traceability in ending the criminal act. One of the ways um, to help uh, to stem the Predia Larsney is the birth of this receipt book. Yes, it's simple. And it's not just an ordinary receipt book. This receipt book is like a passport to your farm. Pradia Larsney, the theft of agricultural produce, including livestock and provisions, affects farmers, the consumer, and the economy. The parish manager maintains that statistics show that 40 to 45 percent of the theft is not recorded, as farmers fail to report these incidents. He says vendors are also involved in the crime. So you're planting with value $1,000 for argument's sake. This thief now chop it and sell it for $200. But he can afford it. And why he can afford it? The $200 is 200% profit for him because he did not plant it, he did not fertilize it. Right? So we just have to put, be put in place to stop the eaglers from buying from them. Also the butchers. You have butchers out there who are contracting thieves. Now the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Pradia Larsley and Prevention Unit is again urging farmers to be more cautious by erecting proper lighting on their premises. We also ask them to put in your CCTV. The use of technology is very important in terms of ridding your place of um, potential risk of the Pradia Larsley. Killing Beck and McLean were speaking at a Pradia Larsney workshop organized by the United States Agency for International Development. Khadija Thomas for CVM Live. Thanks, Khadija. A new isolation ward was constructed at the Bustamante Hospital for Children as a part of a project undertaken by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation recently. CVM Live's Nicoy Wilson reports. In order to make Kingston the center of commerce and culture in the Caribbean, services offered by the city must be improved and advanced. That is the rationale behind the construction of a new isolation ward at the Bustamante Hospital for Children by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, as indicated by Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams. The ward, which took three days to construct, according to Mayor Williams, has been outfitted with state-of-the-art equipment. We have put in the drop ceiling, we have sealed off the area, we have put in a decontamination section 
in that we have put in windows, the plumbing, the entire plumbing. We have redone the plumbing, electricals, doors. We have done all of that. We are going to install AC unit, air conditioning unit. So basically we have constructed a new structure a new unit within the ward. Mayor Williams says the KSAMC manages funds on behalf of the residents within Kingston and St. Andrew and are charged to use the funds for their betterment. Be part of our, our mission and our responsibility as city managers is to use the funds of our residents in a way that benefits the, the residents. There is no greater benefit that you can get in, than establishing and setting up proper health facilities for our children. The, the children will benefit and I know the parents will be well pleased. Nicole Wilson, CVM Live. Today is International Missing Children's Day, a day that is being recognized in over 20 countries around the world. State Minister in the Education Ministry, Floyd Green, used the occasion to call for a unified and coordinated approach to be taken in locating children who continue to go missing. Here's Khadija Thomas again with this report. Statistics from January to March of this year confirmed that 386 children have gone missing. 265 have returned, 119 still unaccounted for, and two have been found dead. It is on this basis that the state minister is calling for a proactive approach to be taken regarding children who go missing in the island. Once you reasonably suspect that a child has gone missing, and oftentimes children have routines, so once you realize that that routine has been missed, you can reasonably go to the police, and that will activate the Ananda Alert Secretariat, which brings together a number of agencies to start the search for our children. Minister Green notes that adults should listen to their children and the necessary prevention methods should be applied to reduce the number of children who are still unaccounted for. For us, one child that goes missing is one child too much. And that must be our mantra. And that must be the approach that we take as a country. He adds that there was a minor decline in children going missing in 2017, a 3% decline from the previous year. The state minister is now encouraging parents and guardians to affirm their children, making them feel loved and respected. So we say to the parents, listen, ask questions, respect the opinions of our children. It is a different age and long gone are the days when children should be seen and not heard. That no work. It's a bad idea. Minister Green was speaking at the Jamaica Conference Center on Friday. Khadija Thomas, CVM Live. On Tuesday, the family members are crying for justice as they believe it's a cover-up in trying to protect the driver. Here's CVM Live's Nikoi Wilson with the story. The spot where four-year-old Asia Mosquito met her demise, an alleged victim of a hit-and-run along James Avenue, Ocho Rios. According to the police, the incident occurred at 6.50 p.m. on Tuesday. Aja's mother, Tamika Hamilton, witnessed her daughter being snatched from her right before her very eyes. The vehicle was on the left hand, and the baby was on the right hand on the banking, and it swing from the left, go right over on the right, and hit down the baby, and run over the baby feet, and mash up the baby. Aja's grandfather is livid as he believes the brutal incident is not being dealt with properly, accusing the investigators of demonstrable bias in what appears to be an alleged cover-up. They might tell me, say, they might investigate. And all where they might investigate the person who do the crime upon the road. And my son, they might interrogate where I feel that I lose. Some of one know what Andrew Oldness. I want to walk one in a Jamaica for the people them when they have nothing. Where the justice there? The child's aunt, Christine Salmon, who also witnessed the incident, says she's still in a state of shock. She is calling for the immediate arrest of the driver of the vehicle who reportedly turned onto James Avenue off the main road that Tuesday evening, resulting in the tragedy. We want justice. Justice. Right now, the lady don't in custody and nothing. She done road and the car work. We want justice. The four-year-old niece. You understand? 
Deja Mosquita, you cannot work, we need justice. Just have to serve, because they have money and we don't have none. When CVM Live contacted the Era 2 police, we were told that investigations into the matter are ongoing and will determine whether someone will be charged immediately. They are also seeking an unidentified young man who they believe witnessed what transpired. The driver of the vehicle involved has not yet been questioned by police. Nicoy Wilson, CVM Live. State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Pernell Charles Jr., says the Jamaican government is now more focused on creating cogent projects that they will be able to monitor and evaluate in fostering growth and development on the island. CVM Live's Khadija Thomas with this report. Senator Charles says these projects are created through agriculture, health, education and enterprise development. Areas, he says, are critical for volunteerism. That we as a country, we have benefited immensely from the work of the Corps through the service of the volunteers who have served in particularly in areas of need. And I think that that is such an uh, an important part of what this organization does. The minister was speaking at the swearing-in ceremony for Peace Corps at the Colin E. Powell Residential Plaza on Tuesday, where he called for volunteers to also identify the gaps and challenges in serving. We're not working in isolation. What you're going to find is that the volunteers, the project managers, are working with the government of Jamaica in tandem to grow Jamaica, to protect Jamaicans, to promote this land. And that is critical. That is why you have support from agencies across Jamaica. He says projects ought to be established to enrich opportunities for volunteers as the investment will bring about positive results. A critical part of that is the linkages between the public and the private sectors and I think at the Peace Corps you play an instrumental part in working together with us in two sectors that are fundamental to our growth, to our stability. The Peace Corps is a volunteer program where participants work in projects ranging from education to business development. Khadija Thomas CVM Live. Thanks, Khadija. The legal team of Sean Campbell, popularly known as Sean Storm, appeared before the Court of Appeal today in an effort to get the single eyewitness statement admitted into evidence. This comes less than two months before the appeal is set to start on July 9. Here's CVM Live's Nikoi Wilson with the report. There will be serious ramifications if the photocopied statement of the single eyewitness is entered as fresh evidence in the matter involving the Queen against popular dancehall artist Sean Storm. Attorney Bert Samuels, who is representing Sean, Sean Storm Campbell, and attorney Tom Tavares Finson, who is representing Adija Palmer, otherwise known as Vibes Cartel, were both in attendance. This is expected to be the last case management hearing before the appeal is set to start on July 9. Attorney Bert Samuel says if the statement is admitted into evidence, then this will put the credibility of the single eyewitness into question. In that statement, certain things are said, which I don't want to disclose at the moment, which if this court accepts it, it would have an impeachment on the credit of that sole eyewitness. So the primary reason for us coming here in the Court of Appeal this morning is for the court to rule on whether that evidence should become fresh evidence. The court has ruled that that issue should be determined by a full court, a three-court judge. What has prompted Samuels and his legal team to take this action is the inability of Campbell's previous attorney to make other arguments in his defense. In our research, we saw where there was an injustice done to Mr. Campbell because his lawyer was unable to argue certain grounds and confront the witness because the prosecution lost or say they lost the original statement of the eyewitness. Sean, Sean Storm Campbell and his co-convicts Adija Palmer, Kahira Jones and Andre St. John are all serving life sentences for the 2011 murder of Clive Lizard Williams. Nicoy Wilson. Well, we'll join Nicoy Wilson again, this time for regional and international news. Making the top regional stories this evening. 
Mia Amor Motley made history today by becoming the first female Prime Minister of Barbados. This, as the Barbados Labour Party BLP secured an unprecedented 30 to none victory against the Democratic Labour Party DLP at the polls last night. Motley and her new government moved forward without any official opposition. Leader of the Democratic Labour Party, Funnel Stewart, conceded defeat and congratulated Motley and her team in the early hours of Friday morning. In Trinidad and Tobago, a crime of passion is how residents of Coco Peace Road, Gasparillo, described the brutal murder of housewife Kavita Lisa Jokan, who was bludgeoned about the head by a man who claimed to love her. The suspect's response was apparently triggered after Jokan refused his advances. The suspect, a 58-year-old gardener from the area, was arrested at the scene after residents noticed blood spattered on his feet and alerted the police. And in St. Lucia, another young life has been lost on the nation's roads. Police are currently investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a 19-year-old Garan man as a result of a motor vehicle collision. H.T. St. Lucia tells us more. According to official police reports, 19-year-old Dane Maximin of Gara Babuno was riding a motorcycle registration number PJ1668 along the Lacqua Gara Road when it collided with a pickup at about 5.10 p.m. Wednesday. Emergency responders arrived to find Maximin's motionless body on the road near a drain. He was pronounced dead on the scene by a medical practitioner and subsequently transported to the Victoria Hospital mortuary. Meanwhile, on the international scene, New York police have charged the Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein with rape and other sex crimes against two women. More than 100 women have accused him of sexual misconduct, including rape. Here's more in this report. The movie mogul who once had Hollywood at his command now is forced to reckon with his past as he surrendered to police over allegations of sexual abuse and the campaigns of coercion he exerted on women. The criminal case involves charges of raping one woman and forcing another to perform a sex act on him. But these are not the only accusations that Weinstein faces. Since the news broke last October of his alleged personal behavior, more and more high-profile actresses have since come forward to talk about their experiences with Weinstein, including actress Rose McGowan, who publicly accused Weinstein of rape. It was also alleged by one publication that Weinstein had hired spies, including former Mossad agents, to discredit and suppress her accusations. Those were the top regional and international stories on Friday. I am Nicole Wilson. Good evening. Well, those are our major stories. More news. Clear News Authority, your 90-minute news program, CBM Live on CBM Television. We have a fabulous Friday panel for you. Of course, still focusing on the much touted reduction in poverty. Is it a true reflection of what obtains? Despite talks of the diminished inflation rate, improved living conditions, is your life better? We've asked you all week. Should the present government take credit for this? Or is it a manifestation of policy continuity? What is the role of the previous administration in this reduction in poverty, the economy, and whether or not we should really be doing a chicken back index, as suggested by Michael Martin Henry, who sat on this panel with us recently. So we have to throw now to Senator Matthew Samuda, Senator Damian Crawford, our two young politicos. What's going on? Poverty down. It is. Unemployment down. We're waiting for you to wave the Jamaican flag and in your other hand the Jamaican Labour Party. Yeah, I wish I had one right now. I mean, I, I never want in politics to, to talk down good things that happen in Jamaica, regardless of whether they happen under the JLP or under the PNP. It's never the right way to uh, approach the discussion. Because at the end of the day, I believe myself, Damien, yourself, um, Richard, want the best for the country. The fact is there's been, in the last um, study by Statin, a 19% fall in poverty. This is as a contrast for a peak in poverty in 2015 of 22.6%. So there, there's much to celebrate, but there's also much to acknowledge that there's a lot to be done. Um, you shouldn't be happy with double-digit poverty in your, in your country. So we have to acknowledge that, okay, we're heading in the right direction, um, but we have a lot to do. And we have a lot to do quickly because, you know, people living in poverty one year, five years, ten years is, is, is too much. So we're happy with the direction it's going, but you ask the question, or rather you pose, you started off by saying whether it's this administration, the former administration, um, naturally um, we are happy with the policies 
that we have put in place. There, there are several that we believe have alleviated the poverty burden. These include the 30% increase to PATH beneficiaries, the, um, the relaxation of the tax burden by way of the 1.5 million increase, <coughs> rather the increase to the 1.5 million um, by way of the tax threshold, um, the removal of mandatory fees to high school students, the increase in, in lunch to students from three days to five days. And to be honest, I could go on and on. But we are happy with the, the measures that we have taken, which are deliberate, which we believe have contributed to this. This against the backdrop that we believe our policies have helped to increase employment by over 66,000 people since we've taken power. Um, we also believe that, you know, our policies at the end of the day, you know, the PNP will say we've had anemic growth or we haven't quite hit the targets that we've hit. But the fact is, in 2016-17 fiscal year, we grew more than the four years before us. In 2017-2018 fiscal years, f fiscal year we grew more than the four years cumulative before us as well. So each year we've grown more than the four years, four years before us. So if you're growing to in totality, you're adding employment, and you're putting in a stronger um, safety net, you're going to have falling poverty now. Senator Crawford, how do you respond to Senator Simula's well, assertions? Well, and what, what is it about policy continuity? Because we have had on several pundits and commentators. Yes. And we're hearing, especially with regard to, to poverty, that those figures actually reflect the work of the previous government. Now, is that so? Well, first of all, we have to do some fact-checking. Um, in 1989, poverty was 30% when the PMP took power. In now 18 years, poverty was reduced to 10%. The JLP won in 2007, poverty was 10%. The JLP, when they left office in 2011, poverty was 20%, a 100% increase in poverty. The PMP then took it to 19%. Um, and then it went to 21%. Now, the first um, misinformation that poverty is down 19%, that's not true. Poverty was 21%, it's now 17%. So poverty is down 4%. So it's a 19% decline. decline when it was 4 over 21. However, it is down 4%. Poverty rate was 21%, it is now 17%. So that's misinformation and misdirection. Now, the JLP came to power in 2016. Now, none of the hotels that were being built, they negotiated. None of the hotels that have been opened, they negotiated. None of the box, bauxite plants that have been reopened, they negotiated. Um, none of the things that they've negotiated have started as yet. And so therefore, to claim that, but I mean, in the contrary, they claim that the crime that has increased under the JLP is a carryover. However, the growth is not a carryover. So there's two parties will, 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 will speak out a different size of the mouth, but I'm saying that the box site was under Philip Powell, negotiated and agreed to. The hotels was under Wickham and he negotiated and agreed to. The BPOs was under um, Portia Simpson and negotiated and agreed to. Now there are some new ones that we're seeing what will happen in the future. But I don't believe um, if it went up or down in 2016, the JLP could legitimately claim that their actions have, 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 have caused this. We have seen where um, authors, um, academ um, academics have said that the $18,000 and the, the tax package that came with it is likely to increase and to affect the poor more than anyone else. That was stated by academ academia, that um, the, the, the method of indirect taxes was more likely to affect the poor than anyone else. And um, we are waiting to see what 2017, 2018, I don't think it's policy continuation, it's policy momentum. There are certain things that you do coming down a hill, it takes a while to stop because not all the policies have been continued. They have continued some economic um, variables, such as um, inflation have been applause, kept low, um, oil prices have contributed, but government action have contributed. They have also um, been able, as I said, free education would cause for people to have spending in other areas. But there was never a point that the poor had to pay, um, even when the PNP had um, um, cost share. Well, there's a... 1.5. There's a misinformation that the, the opposition likes to put forward. There wasn't a new tax bill. That 32 billion was being paid by the PAYE workers every month, every time they they saw their deductions. What happened was it was reapportioned. Now, the, this misnomer that it was it's now being paid by the poor is it, it, very unfortunate because there are significant parts of it that aren't being paid even by Jamaicans. There's um, what is possible arrival tax, yes. room tax. Mm -hmm. That's not being paid by Jamaicans. But that's 9% of the total collected. 
No, but there are other so parts 91 of it. So 91% of the total collected, GCT. And respectfully, I didn't, I'm I didn't sorry, use I'm sorry. that. And mm. we I had this exchange yeah, but last I apologize. night, so I I'm, I, I'm ensuring <laughs> yes, that I don't yes. um, mm. interrupt this time. Mm -hmm. But there are parts of it that aren't paid by Jamaicans. There are also parts of it that reflected a rebalancing mm -hmm. of, of um, taxes by way of fuel tax, so parts that used to be paid on particular fuels are now being paid on other parts on other Why don't you, Matthew, tell us about the, the oil, because it has been said that raising oil prices throughout the world, the oil hedge fund, the tax that we were paying to hedge our bets really against the, the rising and falling oil prices internationally has been moved over to, to, to feed the $1.5 million tax package. So What's going on? What's, what's going to happen? So that's, that's incorrect. And just to state, because I want to make sure I honor what I stated I discussed this evening. Right. The fact is the country is better off than it was two years ago. Okay. And that I am comfortable in saying, I can say in any forum, I'm very comfortable with the policy I'm very comfortable with the policy decisions we've taken. As it relates to oil and fuel, the fact is Jamaica, whether it's Portia Simpson Miller, Peter Phillips, Bruce Holden, Andrew Holness have very little to do with the international oil price. Fair? Very, very little to do. However, there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of discussion around whether or not the oil subsidy, as was taken by Peter Phillips in, I think, the latter part of 2014, early 2015, made sense versus whether we should have taken one now. The fact is 25 million US dollars, and at that time the currency rate would have been maybe 110, 115, somewhere in that, that range, went down the drain because what was taken couldn't be, be, be um pulled in by, it was an insurance policy for all intents and purposes, it didn't rise. And all international metrics, all international pundits suggested that it was a bad time to do it. Whether we should have taken one now, I'm not sure one was available in the same way that one was available then. People don't